When you meditate, you close your eyes and watch your breath. And try to stay with the breath. Don't go wandering off to anything else. And the instructions for meditation, well, they're actually there in the instructions for the, the precepts that we just took. Not killing, okay? Don't kill off your goodness. You're trying to develop some good qualities here, so don't throw it away easily. Not stealing. You're not thinking about other people's affairs. What this person did, what that person did. You don't have to take their affairs and think them over. You've got your own affairs right here that you've got to straighten out. Not misbehaving in terms of sensuality. In other words, you're not going to be thinking about sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations. You're going to stay right here. Try to develop a higher level of happiness and pleasure in the mind. Not lying. Once you've made up your mind to do this, okay, you stick with it, regardless of what other things may come, come up. You've made up your mind. You want to stay here. You want to develop good qualities of the mind. Well, this is how you do it. You don't want to just set up an intention and then push it away. And then staying away from intoxication. As the Buddha said, we're intoxicated with three things. We're intoxicated with our youth, with our health, and our life. And we tend to get really complacent over these things. Okay? As long as you're young and healthy, you feel like, well, I can wait to develop good qualities of mind some other time. I've got other things I've got to do right now. Well, that's intoxication, because there's no guarantee that younger people are going to live longer than the older people. You have no idea when that's going to come. So you have to be prepared. So when you're young and healthy and still alive, okay, you've, got you've got work to do, developing the good qualities of the mind. Because if the mind isn't developed, okay, if it, it's not trained, okay, then it creates a lot of trouble for itself. So try to hold these precepts in your meditation in the same way that you hold them in your life. You may wonder why we ask for the precepts and get the precepts every weekend. What happens to the precepts in the meantime? Well, no questions are asked. But it's to remind you, okay, these are the basic qualities of training your thoughts and your words and your deeds. And they may seem simple, but it's all too easy to go against them, especially on the inner level. But even on the outer level, it's very quick, it's very easy to say a little white lie or exaggerate things a little bit to get someone else to do what you want. And yet that kind of thing is what destroys society. I mean, you look at the newspapers today. How many newspapers can you read and not, and can you believe everything that's being said? You've gotten used to the fact that people lie about things. They exaggerate. They misrepresent things. And so as a society, we can't even get along with one another anymore because we don't trust one another to tell the truth. So of course, you can't get the rest of society to tell the truth, but you can make up your mind that you're going to be truthful both truthful in your words and truthful when you make up your mind you're going to do something good, you stick with it. And that quality of truthfulness develops an area of trust around you. People begin to realize, okay, this is a truthful person, someone you can rely on, someone that they can depend on, someone they will treat with respect. So you treat these precepts with respect, and you become a person worthy of respect. So keep these thoughts in mind. We don't give the precepts just as a formality every weekend. It's, it's there to remind you that it's, these are things you've got to keep in mind day after day after day. How you interact with other people, how you speak with them, how you make sure that the mind doesn't add more intoxication on top of the intoxication that's already there. So as you think about the precepts, don't think of it just as a formality. These are instructions on how to live a happy life, and they apply to whatever kind of life you're living right now, whether you're a student, whether you're working whether you're young or old. These precepts apply to everybody. They're the basic principles of how to make sure that your actions don't go out of bounds and start creating a lot of unnecessary suffering. They're universal principles that, if they were, if they were observed universally around the world, the world would be a much better place. Just these five simple things to try to keep them in mind.